When I talk about known issues on any bike, there are always guys who freak out and say, well, that bike sounds like a piece of shit. No way I'm buying that. You can make a comprehensive list of small issues with any brand. And the Italian bikes have their niggling little faults. I covered these way back in 2015. The good news, they fixed quite a few. The bad news, there are a few things they keep ignoring and some new issues. Let's start with the good news. The mud flap for the rear shock used to slowly wear away the swing arm. Now it's reshaped to avoid this. If you have an earlier model, just trim to suit. There were occasional false neutrals between some gears. A new gear selector in 2018 has fixed this. Vita plastics were very prone to cracking instead of bending. It's early days, but our experience with the 2018 models suggests they finally got around to using the nice flexible materials everyone else is using. After years of complaints that Vita seats feel like slabs of concrete, the 18 models finally have a softer foam. Good news if you like to sit a lot. One area we felt Vita let themselves down was the heavy clutch. It wasn't bad compared to, say, cable clutches, but by European standards, it wasn't good. The 18 model, a big improvement. We've done a vid on clutch mods if you have an earlier model. So, what are the problems for 2018? Europeans could still learn a lot from the Japanese about good electrics. It's a good idea to remove your headlight and fuel tank, then use a pile of zip ties to get your wiring loom neat and not rubbing on anything. There was a critical electrical connection which could easily get corroded and shut down the oil injection system. It's been fixed for 2018 apparently, but some 2017 and all earlier models had the capacitor and diode block mounted upside down, allowing water to enter the heat shrink. Also, the wires going into the magneto can be snagged by sticks when riding. On 2018 models, they are secured better, but it can still happen. Also, the positive wire from the starter to the solenoid runs over the frame backbone just above the rear shock. Reroute this under the backbone to avoid the tank rubbing the wire. Some dealers do fix this in pre-delivery. The four-stroke models still use plastic cogs for the water pump. These need to be replaced every 100 hours, but most riders agree it would just be much easier to have these steel from the factory. You can buy aftermarket steel cogs from Boano in Italy. The standard coolant has too much glycol in it. There have been reports of this affecting two-stroke head gasket O-rings and the thermostat O-ring. Simply flush and change to something between a 30-70 or 50-50 mix. Typical symptoms will be a leaky thermostat and pressure buildup in the cooling system. And talking about the cooling system, another reason for excessive pressure, the radiator cap isn't quite right even for 2018 models. When you tighten it off, remember to back it off slightly so that there isn't too much pressure build up. The two-stroke oil injection system works great for the vast majority of riders. However, there's a small but noticeable number of issues with bikes running too rich and fouling plugs. This is because the system defaults to somewhere around 20 to 1 if there are any problems. Apparently, the majority of cases are debris left in the system at the factory, and a bit of carb cleaner will fix it. But if you can get some compressed air through it, you are guaranteed to remove the debris. Remember to always top up your oil. If the system does stuff up and defaults to the very rich mix, it could be possible to drain your oil tank on a long ride if it wasn't full. Some riders are simply removing the injection system with parts from Beta that cost around $60 to $70. 
a small but persistent problem, the pointy ended side stand that just sinks into soft ground. The crazy thing is the 2012 side stand base was double the size and worked great. Why did Beta go back to this chopstick design? Who knows? A very simple fix, but they've been ignoring complaints for years now. The 2015 Two Strokes often sprayed black gunk over the engine due to a dicky rubber seal between the muffler and expansion chamber. It was meant to be fixed, but it's still happening on some 2018 models. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Easily fixed with some zip ties, hopefully they'll get this right next year. Beta used the same very reliable carburetor that KTM used until recently. The only issue, they tend to overflow so easily with only a mild tilt of the bike. This is more of an issue with the actual carb manufacturer, as Gas Gas and earlier KTMs all had the same issue popping up. The carburetor vents. The two coming out horizontally are fine, but the other two vents point up and loop over the carb. These need to go into the airbox as they can cause problems in deep water crossings. On the four strokes, do the same with the gearbox breather hose. While we are discussing breather hoses, a small number of riders report their engine breather hoses have come off. Just zip tie them in place. And before you put your zip ties away, put some on your carb if you have a cross trainer. The rubber water seal for the throttle cable can be dislodged and will hang up on top of the carb throttle neck, causing high idle speeds. Simply zip tie the rubber boot at both ends. Another cross trainer specific problem is up to 2017 at least, the inner tubes have been known to split and cause punctures. There are no reported cases for 2018 yet, so possibly they've changed to a better quality rubber. Another small but annoying issue, if you thought the seat fabric on KTM's was thin and ripped easily, <laughs> the beaters are much worse. Sometimes the fabric seems to rip even without an accident or impact and you can't buy a replacement one. However, there's an aftermarket gripper seat cover that is much heavier duty. And grippier, surprise, surprise. All the 2018 models have lithium batteries which don't like cold weather. Simply use a short stab of the starter button to first warm up the battery, then it will deliver the power needed for starting. The thermostat housing can rub on the left-hand radiator if it wasn't positioned carefully in the factory. Loosen off the cylinder head coolant hose and left-hand radiator lower hose and twist gently. Remember to check all your hose clamps too. Sometimes these aren't done up tightly at the factory. If you are into hard terrain, the lower chain guide is flimsier than most, and it could pay to fit a sturdy aftermarket one. Tim Coleman discovered this the hard way in the Sea to Sky Prologue, unfortunately. Take care lining up the air filter and double check looking down through the intake with a flashlight. It can look snug and secure, but it's very easy to not fit it properly. This especially applies with the cross trainer where the air box is even more cramped for your fingers. If you guys have more comments, please add them in the comments. I'll be posting this on a few forums too, so I can update those posts with your info.